it is about 12, 11, <laughs> 11 minutes past midnight, the night before auditions, and I forgot to make sides for the auditions, so I'm down here in my little office area, and I'm making sides so the kids can cold read tomorrow. Yay! So usually this would not be that big of a deal, but since COVID, I guess some of the licensing companies have decided they don't want to send out books. So all of our copies are going to be digital, which means that my entire script, I downloaded to my computer and I had to print it out and the kids will have to do the same. So yay, fun for us. It's new and different. Usually I would just have a couple of books on the table and just my markings here that says, you know, copies of sides, who would read what sheet, but um, just an extra step, you know, it's all part of it. I've officially gone down the rabbit hole. That's what I like to call the starting of the show. It's like the moment you start looking towards the show, whether it be with choreography or whether it be looking at the script and start making blocking notes, you are down the rabbit hole. It kind of takes over your life a little bit. Um, you know, you're always thinking about uh, the blocking or something you want to try with the choreography. I actually am one that woke up last year at about one o'clock in the morning, the night before I was supposed to teach the dance to let it go and thought, hmm, one o'clock in the morning, just run into the bathroom and thought, you know, we haven't really done any floor work. So I ended up down here in the office re-choreographing the let it go dance the night before at one o'clock in the morning because I had a really good idea for floor work. Go figure. So down the rabbit hole, that's where I'm at. Also, um, did I get those? Oh, see, I don't know if I can talk and keep. It's very hard for me to keep organized. <laughs> I, I do have a producer for um, the homeschool show this year. I did not uh, really have someone there with me every day last year as a producer to keep me organized. And I said in our parents meeting, just, you know how you say things and you want people to say, oh no, it was fine, it was great. But I made a comment about now I have a producer and we won't be in the mess that we were in <laughs> last year. Sorry, Ray. And uh, the moms didn't say, oh, it's okay. They were like, yeah, we know. <laughs> they were like agreeing with me. So I really am sorry for that. I'm good at other stuff. I have strengths other places. Oh, this is my book that I've made. I went through and you, I've read this probably now, probably about six or seven times. But last night I sat down and I went through and I just kind of dissected the, is dissected a word? I have no idea. I don't know. I dissected a frog. Okay, yeah, sure. Let's just go with it. So, um, go through and I dissect the script, which means that I go, th go through each scene and list who's in that scene and what's involved in that scene. Is it blocking and dancing? Is it only dancing? Is it only blocking? Is, you know, everything that it entails and who needs to be called. This is how I start out on making a schedule. And I don't know if I've said this before, but, um, I direct the same show with two casts. I have one cast that are homeschool kids and they are eight to 18. And then I direct our regular uh, young actors. Uh, they start at five to 12. So I'm doing the show, the same show, but I'm directing two casts at the same time. One is during the day, of course, and then one are, is on a weeknight and a weekend because get enough theater, you know. And I have to map out our entire calendar to make sure that we're going to get everything in and what our pace needs to be. And, um, you know, it really doesn't matter if you have, you know, two months or five months. You have to 
schedule your you have to rehearse wisely let's say that so um, you got to make every every rehearsal count which just reminds me kids if you're watching this you practice at home you rehearse at rehearsals there you go you don't learn your lines during rehearsal you learn your lines at home and then you come and rehearse your lines during rehearsal copies for the sides I've got registration forms I even stapled them and I think we're all good to go just you know hope don't forget the blue binder all done you come out of directing one show and you think oh the next show is it's gonna be so easy you know I mean look at all that I've learned because I learn with every show I direct I've always had some takeaway I've learned with every directing experience that I've had you just think naively that that's going to translate to your next show and sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't because really when you're going from Arendelle, let's say, to 1950s small town Elvis Presley show, you know, they've got your, they're quite different. You're going to have different challenges. You're going to have uh, different things to figure out. Uh, so you're always starting from ground zero with every show. <laughs> but I do always get nervous the night before auditions and I'm not even auditioning which makes no sense but I I don't know if I'm getting nervous just for the kids or you know I hope everything goes smoothly tomorrow I hope everybody does a good job um, I always say it's it's like a Christmas Eve type of nervousness you know excited nervousness because I've always said that auditions are like Christmas morning to me it's it's so exciting to see the kids come out and them do their auditions and them do well so it should be a good day. So I'm going to go take a bath and try and wind down. Again, it's like Christmas Eve. And I'll see you tomorrow at auditions.